One of the most common comments that I get on my videos is that I overcomplicate or overengineer things. Now, in my defense, I would argue that my goal is always to simplify things as much as I can, but with a broader view of making building, extending, and maintaining the entire application simple, not just an individual chunk of code. At a micro level, that can often look like an overcomplication. Anyway, I thought what better way to combat this reputation of over-engineering than by doing a video about replacing services as injectable classes with functions created by injection tokens. Now that we can use the inject function, we no longer need a class in order to facilitate dependency injection. So we can actually create our services entirely as functions. This is an example created by Chow Tran to refactor the chat application from my Angular Start course to do just that. Seeing this example was actually the first time I was exposed to this idea, but I was immediately drawn to it. First, a super quick primer on injection tokens if you are unfamiliar. In Angular, we inject tokens all the time, typically type tokens like this. But we can also create custom injection tokens like this so that we can supply whatever type of value we want, like a string, an object, or a function, and make it available via the dependency injection system. You can see I'm doing that here to automatically configure Firebase to use emulators or not, depending on whether we are in the dev or prod environment. I can just inject these tokens wherever I want to use them and I'll be given the value I need. I don't need to worry about the environment. This is a common use case for injection tokens in Angular. Creating services with injection tokens is not. But we can use this idea to do just that. Rather than using a standard injectable class as the service, we can use a custom injection token that returns a function as the service. So let's see how this idea of using an injection token as a service works. You can see that a utility called create injection token from ng extension is being used here. You can just create the injection token yourself like I just showed you with the Firebase example, but this utility will make things easier for us. When we create an injection token with it, it will provide us with an array of values. These values will include a function that can be used to inject this token wherever it is needed, as in wherever we want to use this service. That is what this value is. Then inside of this function we are supplying to the injection token, we mostly just do what we would do in a normal service, except rather than using a class, we are using a function. The big difference here and what is one of the key benefits is how we expose the public API of this service. What is returned from this function is what will be consumable to whatever injects this service. That means that everything in this service is essentially private by default. Only the things we explicitly return from this function can be used. Then to use the public API of this service, we can use the inject auth service function that is being exported. You can see that being used in this login service. Now you might be wondering how we go about controlling where this service is provided. With a standard injectable class, we have the provided in property, which we often use to provide a service to the root injector, or we might leave it empty and provide it directly to a component like this. With create injection token, by default, the service will be provided in root, so you do not need to configure anything at all. However, if you don't want it provided in root, you can set this is root option to false. You can also see for this service that we are exporting an additional function return from create injection token. As well as the function to inject this service, we are also given a function to provide it. If we take a look at the providers for the login component, we can see this function is being used to provide this component with its own instance of the service rather than a shared one. For applications I'm building completely for my own purposes, I think I'm just going to straight up switch to this approach. The only reason I wouldn't adopt it generally just yet is that people aren't familiar with it. It's nicer, at least in my opinion, but it's not a drop everything and switch to it immediately level of nicer. But I do hope that the community does move towards patterns like this, and I'm glad that people like Chow are helping to innovate and push these ideas forward. And all of Chow's videos are absolute gold, so make sure to go subscribe to his channel, and hopefully we can all encourage him to make some more. Just wait until you hear his ideas about using inputs as outputs.